Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Heather, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today we have a four-month-old puppy with a heart murmur, noted at routine vaccine appointment. Yesterday, we posted her thoracic radiographs for you to look at, and I asked if you think the heart is big. Today, I'll confirm your suspicion. <laughs> yes, the heart is big. This is a great chance for us to talk about criteria for cardiac enlargement. Radiographic findings in cardiomegaly can be subjective, especially they can be affected by breed, confirmation, phase of respiration, and how deep of a breath the patient takes. Subjective findings, such as, for example, the proportion of the thoracic cavity occupied by the heart, the impression of sternal contact, the impression of elevation of the trachea, can all be used. We also like to use objective findings. My favorite objective finding when I'm trying to decide if a heart is large is the vertebral heart score. It is a great means to evaluate heart size in dogs and cats. I can't say that I use it routinely and I probably wouldn't have used it in this case, but let's talk about how it's done. Basically, if you're suspicious that a heart is large and you wanna use the vertebral heart score to help you decide, the first thing you need to do is take one of the lateral views. Make sure that the view is well positioned and that you can see the vertebrae well. You especially wanna be able to see from T4 to T12. Then, you're gonna make two lines with calipers. The first line, which I have here in green, is the long axis. This line you're gonna to wanna to position from the carina or where the trachea branches or bifurcates to the apex of the heart. I'm gonna move this out of the way to show you. The exact position of the apex of the heart in this puppy is maybe a little bit open to imagination. We've got a lot of summation down here and we have a rib or a costal arch going right across, but I would probably put it about here. The next line after you do your long axis is to do the short axis. The short axis on the lateral view is defined as the widest part of the heart perpendicular to the first line that you've made. So I would probably put that about here. In this case, I got about 12.5 for the vertebral heart score. The way that we come to that number is by taking our long axis and our short axis and lining them up from T4 to T12. The number of vertebrae will give you the vertebral heart score. A normal vertebral heart score of about 10.5 is reported for most breeds. Some breeds have their own vertebral heart score and of course, so do cats. What else can we say about the vertebral heart score? I would say it's probably best, and the literature would support, that it's best when we're looking for left-sided changes. In order to show you why, let me go back to this view for a minute. When we're looking for left-sided changes, you can see that the left side of the heart is very well represented in both the long axis view here, and we're capturing that left atrial enlargement often when we do that short axis line here. When we have right-sided heart enlargement, especially the long axis view is probably not capturing, or the long axis line is probably not capturing that right-sided component. We do know that the vertebral heart score is okay to apply to puppies. There is a reference range, there is a paper about that um, by Buchanan's group in 2001 from JAVMA. So I expected that many of you would have already seen the cardiomegaly in this case, but we'd used it as a chance to verify our, verify our findings with a big vertebral heart score. The next thing that we can use when we look at this case is let's look for specific signs of chamber enlargement. Radiographs are not always great for detecting right-sided heart enlargement, but they can be much more accurate when looking for left-sided changes. Here I'm going to put some arrows on a structure where I see a generalized increased opacity just caudal to the caudal mainstem bronchi. This is an area that is described as a bow-legged cowboy sign or sometimes described as a double opacity or a double density sign and it represents left atrial enlargement. Let's look at that on the lateral view. On the lateral view, many of you know that when we're looking for left atrial enlargement, we're looking for this elusive finding of loss of the caudal cardiac waste. This is a great example because it's quite substantial. When I trace the caudal cardiac waste, what I'm referring to is this kind of curvature along the caudal edge of the heart, and it should go straight over towards the carina. Instead, you can see how it goes up. So there's loss of that normal trajectory and this bulging in the caudal cardiac waste. 
the exact tracing of that, I'm using a little bit of my imaginoscope, I don't mind telling you, because there's summation of some blood vessels at the heart base that's making it difficult to tell. So caudal cardiac waste, left atrial enlargement. Cranial cardiac waste, I think that this can be very subjective and often misleading radiographically, especially in some breeds, um, sort of squat chested breeds, this is particularly problematic. However, in this case, if we take that concept of the waist of the heart being that curvature as it goes back, this one is clearly extending more cranially than we would expect. So we have some signs of left and right-sided enlargement. We also, as we mentioned earlier, have increased sternal contact. Many of you will be familiar with the clock face analogy when looking at the heart on the ventral dorsal view. When we're looking for enlargement of vessels at the heart base, we can have difficulty being precise because especially these vessels have soft tissue opacity and they can all contact each other and have either summation or silhouetting that's causing border effacement. But what I see overall is that there's just this generalized extra capacity here along the aortic arch. For me, this is a quite substantial enlargement of the aortic arch. Our visualization of it is a little bit limited because there are other things that are enlarged here too. I want to show you that right here, we have another sort of bulge. This is very likely to represent the main pulmonary artery and or because of its position being closer to the two to three, two to three o'clock position, this part could actually be representing the left oracle. One little spot up here, which is sort of seen as a subtle bulge from here to here, could also be um, a portion of the main pulmonary artery. I'm just gonna go back to the lateral view to highlight a couple other minor findings before we conclude. I want you to notice that on the lateral view, we have the opportunity to assess the pulmonary vessels to the cranial lobes especially, and we can see that the artery and the vein are both fairly prominent in this case. In addition to that, we have all this increased opacity with the blood vessels and increased size and maybe even some tortuosity here to the caudal lobar vessels. This is associated with a generalized sort of hazy interstitial pattern throughout. So I would characterize this as a generalized hypervascular lung pattern accompanied by a mild interstitial pattern. So if I were to conclude on this case, I think where I would land is that we have clear evidence of generalized cardiomegaly. We all saw it when we first started looking at the radiograph. We used the vertebral heart score to confirm it. We then defined that we could, in addition, or more specifically, confirm that we have definite left-sided changes and probable right-sided changes as well. We said that we are quite suspicious of enlarged main pulmonary artery, enlarged aortic arch, and probably enlarged left oracle. Couple that with the hypervascular lung pattern and a little bit of an interstitial pattern, these findings are highly consistent in a puppy with a murmur with a patent ductus arteriosus. Be sure to review the full report for this case, which has some references about PDA in puppies. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.